Today I'm going to show you what's inside of this JATCO 7 continuously variable transmission and how it works. Now this is a front wheel drive transaxle. You can see it's very compact. It's out of a 2020 Chevy Spark with barely 2,000 kilometers on it. So we're going to tear it down to see what's going on inside. Taking a quick look around here, you can see at the front we've got the input which is going to be at the torque converter. I'm going to take off that torque converter. It's pretty thin compared to a lot of other normal torque converters. And then here's where you'd have your transmission input shaft. Coming around the driver's side here, you can see on the top, we've got our selector switch for a park reverse, neutral and drive. And it's switched. There's a vent tube up here as well as the transmission mount. Over here is the input shaft speed sensor. Then we've got a connection here for the TCM, which is inside. And then we've got this tiny little dipstick over here. It's more like a fluid plug. Spinning this around here, we've got our secondary speed sensor. And then the final drive speed sensor. Speaking of which, the differential is housed inside of here. And we've got our two output shafts that go to the front wheels. Starting over here on the side of the transmission we've got this 10 mil bolt for the filter. You can remove the filter housing. A bunch of oil comes gushing out. Okay, I've got a piece of my brother's shirt here. I'm going to sap that up. This is his dress shirt from before he got married so he's not going to need that. Pull out this filter here. Kind of like a cartridge style oil filter. I like that it's pretty easy to access. And of course only having 2,000 kilometers on it it is pretty clean. Pull off this 10 here for the dipstick. That's the easiest dipstick removal ever. Now moving to the top of the transmission, I've got this gear selector over here, which is bolted onto the transmission selector switch. These studs always break off in other cars that I've worked on. Now I'm going to remove these two tens at the top here. That came off pretty easy. I'm just so used to working on rusty cars, but this one's pretty nice. This is basically going to tell the computer where you have your selector switch on your dashboard. Now this does have a transmission pan and a valve body down there. I'm going to see if I can pull off this bell housing over here. It's a bunch of 12 millimeter. Pop off that bell housing. This looks like we got the parking pole mechanism in here. Taking a look inside this continuously variable transmission, you can see this here is the input. And of course the final drive over here would be your output. These are a counter shaft, which is gonna send power out to the first variator. And then the second variator with the belt behind here. Over here, there's a tooth gear over here, which is gonna send signals for your output speed sensor, which is on the casing. Also on the casing was the parking pole mechanism, which is what's gonna engage with this manual valve over here. Now everything is hydraulically controlled so that's why you have a hydraulic line skipping across over here and then of course we have the oil pump drive over here which is chain driven. I'm going to pull out this final drive over here. Next I'm going to pop off this hydraulic tube. I can pop off the oil pump drive gear here and its chain. I'm going to see if I can unbolt the oil pump here. So there is a little snap ring inside of there. This thing out. See there's a bearing that's just pressed into that hole. I'm going to take off this plate. We get these two other bolts here. We go off the input part here and pop off these tens here at the oil pump housing. Just come off here. This is the housing for the oil pump. Pull this little shaft off. I'm going to work on removing this manual valve here. Pull out this little pin. Makes it slide more. Take out this and this little arm here for the parking pole. Gotta get this little pin out here. Little counter shaft here pops out. You can see it's got two bearings on it. As for the parking pole locks into there. All right, so that's as much as I can get from the top here. This has a giant socket on it, which I probably don't have the size for. And these have a weird spline shape, so I'm gonna have to figure out something to get those off. I'm gonna work on removing this transmission pan next. See if any fluid's gonna come out. This is what it looks like inside of a TVT with 2,000 kilometers on it. There's always going to be some debris left from manufacturing. So basically this straw threads into here and provides the optimal height for where fluid is to be filled to. Just above the straw, you pull it out, excess fluid will drip out at the correct temperature. There's no real dipstick on this, although there was that fake one. And here we have the valve body with the filter in front of it. At least things are looking nice and clean and brand new here. We'll pop off this filter. Everything looks pretty new. Now this is the other end of the manual valve. We should be able to pull this right through. So here we've got what is potentially a fluid temperature sensor. Remember this entire thing is encased in transmission fluid. And when it overheats, it's responsible for telling the computer inside of here to shut down into limp mode, especially on a Monday morning when you're late to work in a snowstorm. Now there's a lot of 10 millimeter bolts here, so I'm just gonna start taking apart everything and see what happens. Oh, there's fluid coming out. Oh my goodness, I'm making a big mess here. Alright, so I ran inside and I got my brother's dress pants. I'm just gonna put that down here. He's already married, so he doesn't need dress pants for anything. He can afford to wear boxers. There's the valve body with all of its solenoids. Alright, so now I can access a bunch of hex bolts from the top here. 
and that allows me to pop off this piece here which is the oil pump housing you can see this is the oil pickup area that was fed from the valve body from the oil filter this is the housing here and this is your oil pressure regulator this is going to be one dirty video guys hopefully I don't get banned by the environmentalist all right now that we're done with underneath and the top we're going to flip this over on the other side so we can access this half of the transmission that has the actual gut that we're looking for, which is the CVT belt. So the transmission actually has a rear cover. You remove all these 12s. I got the cover off. You can see here this is where your primary and secondary speed sensors, which govern these variators here, are located, as well as these little notches over here and over here that feed the speed sensors. Welcome to the Continuously Variable Transmission, brought to you by the same environmentalists who want to save you fuel at the expense of throwing your car away after the warranty is done because these fail just so often. So over here we have our primary variator and here we have our secondary variator. This one comes from the input shaft which is ultimately powered by the engine and it takes its power through this belt over here and sends it through the second variator and then down to the output. Now the way this transmission works is by varying the diameter here of where your pulley is sitting on the input and the output side. You could achieve a drive ratio it's not really a gear ratio because you don't have gears kind of nestled together the way you do in an automatic transmission with planetary gear set so by moving these variators together you can get a larger diameter just like on this side in this particular scenario if your input is very small ratio and the output is very large it's kind of like a first gear scenario where your rpms are pretty high but the output is pretty low that gives you a nice torque multiplication now these nuts on these shafts here are very very large and i don't have a socket to fit over these nuts to to remove them so I'm going to have to use a different tool. I'm just going to use my snap ring removal tool to take off these nuts. So if you just beat it it rotated the shaft so I decided to just cut it off. There I busted a nut. Let me check this one off as well. There we go. I busted a nut a second time. <laughs> so this bearing also fell off too. Ah, it's hot. Pop that bearing race off. Now we can get this reluctor wheel off. Back over on this side, I've got my 11 socket. Shoot, it never works on camera. Let's see if I can pry this off. Get all the bolts. All right, so this giant piece that just sat there basically takes hydraulic fluid from that pipe we took off earlier and sends it through to this piston over here. Now this piston controls the planetary gear set because there is one planetary gear set inside of here that controls reverse and a high-low. This is the return spring that will spring the piston back into place when hydraulic fluid is released. I'll pull this off, see if we can pick that out of there. These clutches are actually a brake because they brake along the outside housing of the transmission. What that's going to do is going to stop the planet carrier or the ring gear from rotating and that's what's going to give you reverse. Pull this whole thing out here. Here you can see it is actually the ring gear it's going to be braked against the transmission housing and of course this being a brand new transmission these clutches are absolutely brand new but furthermore on the inside here you can see another set of clutches and that's also going to be activated by hydraulic fluid through these little holes over here from the shaft and it's got a thrust bearing on here too here you can see the planetary gear set this here is the planet carrier i took off the ring gear which would attach to these little planets over here and then we have a sun gear down in between there that's spinning along this spline over here but let's see if i can pop that off i'm surprised there's no snap ring this is cool this planet carrier actually has two ratios of planets it's got a bigger one and a smaller one now I can pull out the Sun gear and it's got its external splines and that's actually splined to this clutch in here finally I found a snap ring okay so that snap ring went flying in my face and now I have the last set of brakes These also break against the transmission housing here and that controls the Sun gear then there's another snap ring in here Here it looks like we have a return spring for a piston and then there's a piston inside here if i can pull out this piston so we have that piston you can see there's a seal on there and its return spring now the back of that planetary gear set we have a bearing that's pressed into the housing and that's what's holding the secondary pulley in so i'm going to give it a little tap here and then i should be able to remove the entire pulley set from the casing just like that I'm just adding a zip tie around here because I want to keep this belt as a desk ornament and it's going to fall apart if I take everything apart here. So here we have the guts of this carrot eater. It's the CVT belt and variators. These here are called variators. They're basically giant hydraulic pistons that move in and out relative to the fixed side over here. So in this case, this input side here, this is fixed. And on this side here, this side is fixed here. And the variator sides are going to move in and out. 
Now between these two here you have a 22 degree angle and likewise on the CVT belt here you've also got a 22 degree angle and depending on where this belt is on this radius over here is how you're going to set your drive ratio. Now in this case the radius here is very small which means that you have a very low gear ratio. Likewise the radius over here is very big you can see it's right up at the top of the variator over here. Now if you push this variator in, it's actually going to tighten up this cone over here and cause the belt to ride up the cone over here, increasing its diameter. Likewise on this side, you're going to have to reduce this cone over here and that's going to cause the belt to sink down a little bit further, effectively giving you a higher gear ratio. However, since there's no belt tensioner here, you just have two variators. They both have to move in sync with each other, otherwise your belt could come loose or it shudders. So let me see if I can take this thing apart safely here. There we are. This is your output variator. Here's your CVT belt. And here's the input variator. Alright, with the belt freed out here, you can see just how different these variators are. This one's squished together by this much. Whereas this one here, I can actually move it by hand, was pushed out this much. By varying that gap there, you can vary exactly which radius the CVT belt is sitting on and thus the drive ratio. Here you can see this piston moves nice and freely back and forth. And that's pretty much the limits of where the belt's going to be at its highest position and at its lowest position. Now this one over here, I tried to move it, but it's a little bit stuck. It probably just needs a little bit of encouragement. Now inside of here, you do have hydraulic seals that has to hold that fluid. So of course, if those do wear out after a while, this thing's not going to shift properly. Taking a look at how the variators and the belt work together here, you can see the belt itself is made up of hundreds of different pieces here. And it's got two steel bands that hold everything together. And now if I do remove these steel bands, everything's going to come apart. That's why I've got these zip ties on them. Remember that a CVT belt is a push belt, which means unlike a pull belt, like an alternator or something, it's not pulling the other pulley, it's actually pushing it, which means that all of these are being compressed together in order to transmit rotational force. Now looking at that variator, you can see that it's got a cone angle of about 22 degrees and the belt also has a cone angle of about 22 degrees so they always mesh together no matter where the belt is riding on the surface so here's another CVT belt that I took apart in the Nissan Murano video you can see it's a bunch of these small little pieces over here that look like this in their cross section and they've got that cone angle on it that's going to match the cones on the variators now the going thing with CVTs is efficiency you see in an automatic transmission you have all these friction clutches and that causes a lot of drag when they're rotating but they're not really clamped together in a CVT you don't really have that drag you just have this belt that's rotating and also it's got an infinite number of gear ratios you see nowadays they've got like 10 speed automatic transmissions those CVTs are infinite speed automatic transmissions and they can always keep the engine in their sweet spot for power so the next question is how are these variators controlled well they are controlled hydraulically by adding oil over here in the center and that's controlled over here through these two oil ports which you can see on the transmission casing now those two oil ports are going to come to the main transmission housing and lead up to these ports over here which are going to hook up to the valve body which sat in here which we're going to see next now taking a look at the valve body this is basically the brains of the automatic cvt transmission you can see that there's a bunch of little valves over here and holes and ports where fluid is going to travel through and most importantly these solenoids are going to control the reverse brake clutch for your one two shift and your reverse on that planetary gear set your torque converter lockup and of course how much fluid goes into and out of the variators to vary the gear ratio. There's also a couple of temperature sensors on here. Of course CVTs are notorious for overheating and that's what tends to put them in fail safe mode. Just going to carefully disconnect some of these solenoids here, making sure not to damage anything. All right, I think I've got some of it apart here. Here we have one solenoid, a couple of brackets here, wiring harness, and I can take half of the valve body apart here. Of course there's this middle plate here that kind of acts like a gasket. And this is the guts of the valve body. All right, now I can start pulling out some of these solenoids. This one looks cool, clean. So by turning this over, I remove those two pins. Can you imagine having to take this thing apart just to change these two, two solenoids? you think it would just be as simple as a pan drop, but you gotta take this whole thing out. Now the solenoids are basically flow directors, they're electronically controlled. You can see there's a little coil in there that move a little valve back and forth, and that's gonna redirect fluid through this brain looking maze over here. And that's what's gonna send the fluid to the appropriate channels in the transmission casing. Here we have the transmission pump. This is basically a vein pump. All right, you can see as this thing rotates inside of here, these little veins are gonna make their way outside, and that's gonna create fluid flow. And that fluid flow is what's gonna feed the transmission valve body. Let me just take this thing a little bit further apart here and these are the little veins that live in these slots here. Now taking a look at the planetary gear set that comes after your secondary drive 
Now most transmissions have to have a planetary gear set for reverse gear. However, this one's unique because it also has a two speed gears, which means you're gonna have low speed and high speed, which is gonna increase the range that your CVT transmission can spin up at. It's kind of cheating though, because it's like having a first and second gear in a regular automatic transmission. So this here is a secondary drive driven by the belt. Inside of here, we have a planetary gear set. There's three different clutches. One on the outside here, which is this big one that's spline to the transmission casing. One on the inside of that, which splines the ring gear to the planet carrier. And then the one on the outside here for the sun gear to the transmission casing. You can see these here have their own pistons and their own return springs, as well as these little friction discs. And this one here has a bigger return spring and a bigger piston. Now how these work is you have this giant piston here which has a little hole in it where hydraulic fluid is going to be sent through. Now once you set hydraulic fluid in there these plates can no longer rotate relative to each other and they're going to completely lock up. So whatever is spline to the outside, in this case the transmission casing, is going to be stuck to the inside which is going to be the ring gear over here and it's going to be locked up solid. Alright so let me take this apart here again so we can have a closer look. That part's the variator over there and that's going to become your input. Now over here we have a sun gear and then we have a planet carrier. This here is the planet carrier and you can see it's got splines over here that are going to spline to the inside over here because there's another clutch in there. And that clutch gets activated through these little holes over here from the shaft that sits inside of here hydraulically is going to carry fluid there to lock those up. And of course on the outside here we have this ring gear which is attached to the splines on the outside here. Transmissions are always so oily, I just always have to have my brother's jeans off camera here to dry off my hands otherwise it'll slip. Alright so here's how the planetary gear set works. You've got our input from the variator here and the output that goes to the final drive. I'm going to hold this sun gear stationary and you can see that the output is going to rotate. The output rotates at a very slightly smaller speed than the input over here so there's a slight gear reduction. Now in the second mode here if I open that out and hold this ring gear stationary you can see that I've got a reverse gear because it's moving in the opposite direction. Now the two speed aspect of this transmission comes from the fact that we've got two different sizes of planet carriers. So here we've got the sun gear which is larger that drives these smaller gears here and these smaller gears are going to drive a larger gear which in turn is going to turn against a smaller sun gear. Now because there's that change in size over here that's going to give you your two speed ratio when you lock up the appropriate clutches. And so these are all the components inside of a continuously variable transmission and how they work. So the next time you start up your little economy car, think of all these components that have to work just to get you to the park so you can ride your bike. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.